aware this is the second uh, version, second uh, movie about recursion. Uh, this is a little bit more complicated. This is a double recursion. We have a method called recur2. It takes in two parameters. <clears throat> Don't pay much attention. Don't pay any attention to this parameter. It's just used uh, in the output to, to vary the indent uh, that things are printed. So that's this loop here, which um, <clears throat> just prints a bunch of spaces before it prints the values of y y minus 2 and y minus 1. Um, you know, that will <clears throat> be clear in a minute what that's all about, but it's it's just a, doesn't really have anything to do with the recursion. It's just a, a formatting issue. Okay, so here are our two recursive calls. <clears throat> Again, don't worry about this second parameter. It's just going to increase the value of indent the further, the deeper we go into the recursion. So, uh, we have a, a, the first call is going to decrease y by 2. <clears throat> and whatever it gets back eventually, it's going to add it to <clears throat> a, a second call to recur the recursive method. And this one is just going to really decrease y by 1. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Now, this is an int uh, method, so it, it, it will return an integer value, has to return an integer value. And, you know, when we're adding up things here, we're going to get an integer. Um, if we go beyond the stopping condition, or if we hit the stopping condition, right, if we get a value of 0, y equals 0 or less than 0, we're going to return 1. Else we're going to return the sum of these two recursive calls. Okay? So let's um, <clears throat> compile this and <clears throat> make a new one. And um, yeah, okay, so we'll do it with five <clears throat> and for indent zero. So we start off with a zero indent. As we go deeper into the recursion, we indent more. Okay, so <clears throat> two things to note here. We return, we get back 13. So after going through all the layers of it <coughs> of its recursive calls, this thing returns 13. So remember that. Um, so here's here are the uh, every time it gets to this line, right? It's outputting a value for y, y minus two, and y minus one. So we start off with five. That's what we called this with. <clears throat> 5 minus 2 is 3, 5 minus 1 is 4, okay? So the recursive call to the left will be made with 3, and the recursive, or the first recursive call will be made with left. The reason I said with 3, sorry, the reason I say left and right will be clear in a minute, <clears throat> but the first recursive call, the one on the left, uh, in that version of recursion, y will be 3, the second recursion call the one on the right, when that recursive call is made, y will be equal to 4, right? <clears throat> Here's the second version of the recursive, recursive method, second version, in that, as you can see, y is 3, right? That came from there. And, um, and that's the, but it's going to pass into the, its rec first recursive call, and <clears throat> to its second recursive call. <clears throat> so on one. Um, and <clears throat> at that point, it will hit the stopping condition and it will return some stuff. This two here comes from this, right? After, after it finishes the left side, it goes off on the right side or this or the second recursive call. <clears throat> and that will uh, get to 1 eventually, and it will return values. And this 4 comes from up here, right? After it finishes going off and doing all the stuff from the first recursive call, it eventually comes back to here and goes off on the second recursive call, the one on the right, and does all of that stuff. 
<clears throat> so let's look at this in SketchUp and maybe it will be a little clearer because I find this a little confusing and you may too. So what I did in SketchUp here is um, <clears throat> make copies of this method, each one representing um, one of the recursive versions. Right? This is the first one down here. <clears throat> and these are the ones uh, off to the left from the first recursive call, and these are the ones off to the right from the second recursive call. The um, <clears throat> I didn't do the final recursive calls, all the ones where it hit the stopping condition. There would be you know, there'd be a whole bunch of them after all these. But in all cases, when it hits that <clears throat> when it hits that stopping condition, it returns one. So we don't really need to do that do those. We just need to do the ones before those to make this clear. Okay, the blue <clears throat> boxes represent when we got to this point from a call from the first recursive call, the brown from the second recursive call, or the right one. Okay, so let's, let's go down and look at this <clears throat> in a little bit more detail. So here we are. When we first call this thing y is equal to 5, right, and that's here, right at the beginning. <clears throat> and we make our first recursive call off to the left. And we, we pass in y minus 2 or 3. And um, <clears throat> this just sits here waiting until we finish up with this. So this is going to wait a while, right? Because we have to go off and do this, right? And in this one, y is 3. And again, we go off to the left. So this one will wait a while. We get over here, and <clears throat> y is equal to 1. When we make the call to the left, which does happen, right? But I said we didn't, I don't show these because there'd be too many of them. We hit the stopping condition, and we return 1, right? That's what we do, return 1. <clears throat> so 1 gets returned from that call, right? Now that call is done, so we can come over and do this one, right? <clears throat> well here, when y equals 1, and we do this call with y minus 1, again we're going to hit the stopping condition, which will return 1. So that also gets back a 1. Now this can finish up because it has values for both of both sides of this uh, formula, and, um, and it adds those up and returns Two. Where does it return to? It returns to the recursive, uh, <clears throat> the, the version that called it, which is this one, right? So two gets returned to here, and now it's finished with this side, and it can go off and do this side. So y is three, so it calls this with two, right? And <clears throat> then it tries to do the left side. And y minus 2, and y is 2 is 0, so that's going to hit the stopping condition, and that's going to return 1 to us. So that's set to go. Now we need to do the right side. And we pass in y minus 1, and we get to y equal to 1, and we go off and do the left side, and we know that will hit the stopping condition, so that gets back a 1. This will hit the stopping condition, that gets back a 1. Those two get added up, <clears throat> they get returned to here. This is now finished, it can get returned back to here. Um, three, <clears throat> so this is three, that's finished, and that can get returned back to our starting case. All right, a nice big five there. All right, so that left side is all done. Now we go off and do the right side, and it's the same thing, right? It's, <clears throat> okay, so now we're with y equals 4. We immediately make the left call, right? <clears throat> y equals 2. When we go off to the left from that, we hit our stopping condition, so that we get a back of 1 from. When we go off to the right, we get y equals 1, and we know what that does because we already did it over here. That gives us back a 1 when we go off to the left, a 1 when we go off to the right. Those get added up. They come back to here. 2. 
those get added up they come back to here three <clears throat> now we go off and do the right side right with y equal to four so uh, I tilted it a bit here so it would interact with this one so let's see what we got um, so y is equal to three here we go off to the left <clears throat> with y minus two so we get to this one right and that's going to give us the classic one and one what we always get when y is equal to one that returns two back to here Right. Now we go off um, to the right side, and we get y equal to 2. We go off, make the call to the left there. That gives us back a 1. We go off to the right with y equal to 1. And again, this is the third time we've seen this. We get 1 and 1. That gets returned to here. 2 and 1. That gets returned to here. Uh, 3. And that gets returned to the 2 and 3 to 5, get returned to here. And <clears throat> that's all done. That can now return to here. And that's the 8. Um, and uh, you add those up. And you get 13. And it's done. Right At that point, the stack would be empty. The recursive calls are done, and uh, <clears throat> and you've got your answer. Okay, so it's you often get a question on the AP exam. It's like mystery method. What does this return? And there are two recursive calls in it. And what you have to do, unless you can do it in your head, um, is set up a tree-like structure like this, but you keep track of the the variable that you're passing in as it um, as it decreases or approaches the stopping condition, and then what you get back from each of those calls, so just like I did here. Right? You don't have, it would be like, you could just do this quickly on a piece of paper with just these three numbers for each one, right? And the little arrows indicating it. And it's very easy to keep track of all that and then uh, get your answer, okay? So that's, um, <clears throat> that's a double recursive call in, uh, in Java.